So I'm, I'm a cosmologist and uh, my, main interest, my main interests lie in learning about the fundamental physics from um, astrophysical probes, so astronomical observations like for example Planck which uses the cosmic microwave background which is an astronomical observation or uh, surveys of the galaxies in the universe and to learn, fundamental, learn about fundamental physics and the origin of the universe from that. But there's a very interesting counterpart to that which is that, um, of course, in places like here at CERN, um, uh, people and we and physicists are probing uh, the um, fundamental particles and interactions between fundamental particles directly. That's a little bit different um, uh, as an enterprise. Uh, we work with the universe as it presents itself. Um, here at CERN, you can control what happens, uh, you create the experimental conditions yourself. Um, but uh, it's also true that um, we, uh, by looking at the actual universe, uh, we have access to um, extreme conditions which are very, very difficult, if not impossible, to recreate in the lab. Whereas uh, the advantage of working in the lab is that you have complete control over uh, the experimental conditions and you can repeat them many times. We're not quite at the level yet where we can c repeat uh, the creation of the universe many times. Um, and, uh, but what's very interesting is that by looking at astronomical observations and um, using them to infer what happened in the earliest moments at the origin, we access energy scales which are, um, which are as high or even higher uh, as the one uh, than the ones that are being accessed here at CERN. So Planck gives us an unprecedentedly uh, highly resolved and accurate view of the cosmic microwave background sky um, and with that power of Planck uh, we can put constraints on for example the amount of uh, deviations from Gaussianity in the primordial perturbations um, which are uh, much better than what we had before. So we reduced uh, the constraint range, for example, by a factor of three. This means that we're now getting uh, into uh, re a regime where a lot of models that, that uh, predicted um, non-Gaussian perturbations are now uh, getting in trouble. They're being ruled out. Um, those models have a lot of interesting structure. In fact, in some ways, um, if we had seen non-Gaussianity with Planck, we would have gotten a lot of uh, interesting information. Um, we, you know, we would have found exotic models, and that's always fun. Uh, but what seems to be the case is that uh, these very tight constraints we get from uh, Planck uh, favor uh, the simplest kinds of models of uh, the early universe that we have. Um, and one of the things we need, for example, um, for this um, notion of inflation that the early universe expanded extremely quickly to make the very large and smooth universe that we observe today um, is something called a scalar field. Now, again, I'm not going to explain what a scalar field is, but so far we've not seen scalar fields in any other parts of physics um, uh, that we have direct access to in the lab. Well. Actually, now we have seen a scalar field, a manifestation of a scalar field, and that's the Higgs boson. And so, uh, in terms of closing the loop, in some way, of uh, uh, some theoretical speculation in some ways that led us to postulating a scalar field to explain the physics of the early universe, um, now we actually have some um, evidence that these scalar fields exist and are not just uh, dreams of theorists um, and the Higgs boson that uh, has been discovered at CERN is a manifestation of the presence of a scalar field. So there's a connection there um, which makes us feel a lot better when we do cosmology because we now know that we work with uh, entities that actually um, have been observed. Now, in the 50s or 60s, people were saying that all of cosmology is, uh, is essentially based on just two and a half facts. Um, uh, now, things are very different. Cosmology is now precision uh, science. We're talking about, uh, for example, the level of non-Gaussianity we are able to measure with Planck is now at the 0.01% level, um, which makes it the uh, most precise test of inflation um, 
and, uh, and this is just going to continue in, on into the future. What we're doing is we're really putting the screws on uh, the standard model of cosmology. Uh, we're trying to uh, test it in every way we can, gather all this information uh, from the cosmic microwave background, from surveys of the large-scale structure of the universe, and many other probes, essentially l trying to make a map of the entire observable universe and use it uh, in an integral fashion to constrain uh, the physics of the origin. I'm a cosmologist because I think it's really a fundamental part of the human condition to be curious about one's origins. And um, I think one thing that's really miraculous and special about the current epoch that we live in now is that this is the epoch where uh, humanity discovers the universe. Um, and you know, at some point we will know what the observable universe looks like, just like we now know that the Earth is a, you know, is a globe, um, which wasn't known at some point. So there was a century when the Earth was discovered. Uh, we now live in the century where we're discovering the universe. And uh, that's something that, um, that's, I guess that's the reason why I'm a cosmologist.